Hello all, uh, this is the first class of a series where I am planning to do a Python course on all possible Python programs, which is going to be handy for a lot of you. So whether you're in 9, 10, 11, 12 of any school or in your college, or you just want to learn Python from the scratch, I think this course will help you do that. So the first step in any other programming language is to install that first. So it's advisable to install it in your desktop or laptop. So it's very easy to install on a lightweight system. You can just go to python.org, which is there in your link here. And you can download the latest version, depending on the Windows or Mac or any other system. So once you have downloaded Python, and you should be able to see that if it is installed properly, if you type idli, you can see that it is installed here. So just open that so so that now we are set to start learning our python programs right so even before we start what is python so all these theory i think many books will there are so many books in the market and in the link description after each session i will also be uploading notes for you for just learning this course in full so the first chapter in in any book will introduce you to <coughs> variables operators and a lot of theory behind it Python is completely open source, was developed by Guido von Rosum. And uh, in Python, the first thing that we have to know is there are two different modes of Python where you can operate. One is an interactive mode, which is the best to learn small, small code. Like it's like a code snippets. So you have two modes. One is called as the interactive mode. And the other one is called as your script mode. So we'll do, be doing both in the session itself. So this will be your... Basically, you will be doing script mode because in script mode, you can store them as files and you can use them later. So whatever programs you are learning now, so you can just store them and you can name them so that later you can come back and refer to the codes. Whereas interactive mode is only for testing something. When you get a doubt on with how this function is going to work and things like that, then you will use the interactive mode. So the broad theory behind Python as any other language, it is like it's a very, very easy to use language. It's an interpreted language for line by line. It is going to... Uh, in check your code as a new when you write it and uh, the main advantage of python is it doesn't have any much brackets here it is indented so the indentation has to be proper for python code to work and i think anyone can learn python in maybe in less than 10 days you can get a basic concepts of python correct and if you are going to practice for at least say one or one and a half months you can complete this course and uh, maybe you can be able to do very simple programs in python and yes, if you're doing it for a college purpose, wherein you want to enhance your, you can at least be able to understand the logic of any Python program given to you. So in Python, generally you have, we call them as tokens. These will be the theory part of it. So the different tokens, the tokens are the parts of a program. So in the parts of the program, in general, there are going to be five parts in any program. So you start with the keywords. Of course, like any other language, Python is a like a, like our usual language. It has certain keywords with it. So those keywords are going to be reserved words and we cannot use them for, they have a special meaning to the to the Python interpreter. Then you have your identifiers. Identifiers are the names that we give, the names that we use for storing some value. Then you will have your operators. We need the major idea of computer science is to make mathematics easy for us. So solve mathematical problems in very fast time and accurately we use computer. That was the first purpose that computers were built. So that is the next token. And then you have punctuators. Of course, though there are no brackets in Python, there are some colons, some symbols which have special meaning that we have to learn about. And finally, literals. So literals are nothing but the values. The detailed explanation of all this will be there for you because I think that you can learn from any book. The major thing that we are going to do today being the first classes, <clears throat> we are going to write our first Python program just to make sure that everything is set up properly. So there are only two statements that you should be majorly bothered about. One is called as your input statement and the other one is called as your print statement. So as the name itself says, input statement gets a value from the user. It's used for input purposes and then print will print a value on the screen. So in previous versions, like Python 2.2, now we are in three point versions. When Python, if you look at a previous code, which for somewhere you see a code, which is there in a book, it has something called as raw underscore input. Understand that it is nothing but 
it is the previous version of input it will not work any longer in by python 3.0 version but this is actually means the same statement you just have to replace the statement with input statement so that the program will work for us so <clears throat> as i told you here this is my prompt this is my interactive mode it is called the python shell and in the shell i can type anything i can just say print 5 it's going to print 5 for me, right? And then I can assign anything. The assignment operators, you're going to say, let's say A is equal to 6, B is equal to 8. And then let me say print A plus B. It's going to print me the answer for that. So if I want to test something like this, then I can as well use this. But let me use a proper program. Let's do one usual program that we do we have a new file. Usually we say hello world when you have, if you have learned other languages before in C, C++, Java, the first uh, program that we will do is we will just say print hello world and it will print it. So that's, that's the first program to check if a language is installed properly. I'm sorry. So this is the interactive shell. So in here, if I type anything, you can see that I'm getting the answer here. Now I've opened a new file. So how do I open a new file? I go to file, new file. It's there on your topmost window there. So in file, new file, I can get a simple program. I can, uh, asked input from the user and print it. So let's take the same question. There is a comment. I am using a hash symbol. Let's say addition of two numbers. So when I say addition of two numbers, I'm going to get two numbers from the user and I'm going to add and print the result. It's simple. So I'm going to use a variable. So let's say any name I want. Let me say a is equal to int input enter first number. So whatever has to get inside the print, when you give it inside your double quotes, it is going to be printed as such on the screen so that we will know what to do. You are asking the user to enter the first number. Now, I'm using an int there. It is called as typecasting. If I want to get a integer number, then I use int. There are different types. Maybe if you're very new to computers, you might not know this. Otherwise, you will be knowing that int means integer, float means a decimal number. And then if I don't use anything, it will just take a string. Same thing I can do, b is equal to int input, enter the second number. So now once I've got two inputs from the user, I just have to add, maybe I can use a different variable c is equal to a plus b. So now the result will be stored in c and I have to just say print and I can say C. Now, if I want to print in a very beautified way, I can just say print sum is equal to C. The value is stored in C, so I'm printing it as sum is equal to C. Now, no, I want to print it in a very nice way. I can also say print A, comma will make sure that I can use multiple things too in a sing single line. So first it's going to print me A, then I'm printing a symbol plus. Then I'm saying the value B. Then I'm saying equal to. Then I'm saying C. So this will now print me, like let's say for example in the previous case, if it's a 6 plus 8 is equal to 14. So if I want the output in that format, then I will use this. So go to run. There is a run module here. So you have to store your program. So this, let's say... So now I can see that the shell, it's asking me to enter the first number. So I'm entering some number nine. Second number, let me enter some number. So you can see that there are two print statements here. Print sum is equal to 76. The next one is nicely printing it as nine plus 67 is equal to 76. There are some things you have to play around and find out what it is because 
if you you can make a lot of mistakes even in the simple code the first is you can write instead of a you can see that in sum i have used double quotes but in plus i am using single quote doesn't matter at all in python you should not interchange the quotes if you use double quotes you have to use throughout double quotes in the same in one statement if you are using single quotes you can use single quotes so in the a b c they also have to be wherever you want the value to be printed you should not enclose it with quotes wherever there is some string to be printed on the screen you will use quotes there so this is the first program so addition of two numbers is our first program so like this you can do many programs you can also write see other programs i'm going to write it down for you so same way when you have to have let's say area of a triangle right when i have a program to write area of a triangle you can directly write this program itself right because triangle we have a lot of formulas but let's assume we are making it simple half into base into height is my formula for this so let me write here as a comment for my own reference area is equal to now i'm starting my program i have to get the base and the height from the user so i'm going to say b is equal to i can say float input right we type it itself so this copy pasting this program so let's say i can use any variable name i want i can make it more meaningful by saying base is equal to instead of using int let me say i have a float i can also give a decimal point value enter the base you want to use your heron's formula which you have studied in ninth standard you can as well do that all these functions are supported here enter base and then let me say height i can say int or float doesn't matter here as long as if you enter a wrong number it will not take it depending on your requirement you have to choose your data types enter the height and let let me give a name area is equal to i can say 1 by 2 there are two different operators in python there is a single slash and a double slash so double slash will be integer division single slash is normal division but to avoid any confusion i will just use 0.5 itself into base into height so now print area of triangle <clears throat> so this is my small program you can use the same program now i think it should be clear for you area of a triangle area of a square area of a rectangle or any area that you need any formula you have you just have to write the formula correctly if you do the formula correctly and just substitute get the values from the user and substitute it you should be getting your answer in no time so all mathematics problems which we have done so far So it's asking me to enter the base. Let me say six. Height is five. Area of the triangle is fifteen. Now you can improvise on it as and when. Every time you go, you can improvise on it. You can write if you want to print comma square units. You can do that also. Right. So this is the first concept of any. any python course you just have to install it right so spend 15 minutes install your python correctly make sure it is working and try these two programs and i think you are ready to get started with python so as and when i find time i'll keep making more programs it will be a purely practical class so i am only intending to do all the programs because those carry more weightage in all your exams also and yes when you have any doubts keep to send me your queries in the comments i will try to upload whatever notes you require and yes if any other programs you want me to teach you also i would like it in the comment section so i can teach those programs next to you not not immediately first i have to finish off so next we will be doing the control structures which will be the next topic so if else how to use if else if and elif and then we will be moving on to iteration wherein we will try to use for loop while loop standard programs which we have prime numbers palindromes and all the programs which are covered in your syllabus and slowly we will move on to string list tuple and dictionary so once that is done it is kind of the basis of uh, cbsc 11th grade and also some of the colleges they stop there for the first one semester 
Then we will go for the concepts of 12th standard in CBSE, which is files. And then we will also do SQL and how to interface SQL and Python. So that will be the entire course content for you. So till the next video, see you all then. Bye-bye.